Wait. Good morning. Now we'll discuss donors tax. And like and subscribe and hit the bell button too. So first we'll discuss the concepts, the general principles of donors tax. The definition of donors a donation is um, seen in Article 725 of the New Civil Code, which um, states that it is an act of liberality whereby a person disposes gratuitously of a thing or right in favor of another who accepts it. So there's this um, requirements, requisites of a valid donation that you need to consider. Okay? That there must be a valid acceptance, there must be this thing, there must be delivery, actual or constructive, okay? There must be in capacity of the donor, actually there's um, three, um, capacity of the donor, the donative intent, which is very necessary in the absence of the donative intent, the transaction may be considered as another, in another form, not as a donation. And then the third one is the delivery. And um, the fourth one is the acceptance by the donee. So there are four actually. The donor's tax shall be imposed upon the transfer by any person, resident or non-resident of any property by gift. Tax, the tax shall apply whether the property is held by trust or otherwise, or whether the gift is direct or indirect and whether the property is real or personal, tangible or intangible. It is the law at the time of the death or at the time of the perfection or completion of the donation that shall govern the imposition of the donor's tax. So donor's tax, you need to note, is uh, imposed on donations that are made during the lifetime of the donor. If it is done, mortis causa, the, and partakes of a nature of a testamentary disposition, then that would be subject to the estate tax and not donor's tax. The same rate as estate tax, donor's tax rate is now at 6%. There, these are the few, a few rules to remember for donor's taxation. So when you say RC, that pertains to resident citizen. NRC is non-resident citizen or resident alien. They're liable for donor tax for all properties that are, or for all gifts that are made wherever um, the property is located. For non-resident alien or NRA, they're liable for donor tax only if the property donated is within the Philippines. So there are also donations that are exempt from excise uh, from donor's tax. First one, we need to classify whether the donee is a resident or a non-resident alien. For residents, for residents, these are the two exemptions, the general exemptions that may be found under the law. The gifts made to or for the use of national government or any entity created by its agency which is not conducted for profit. It's very important that the agency is not conducted for profit or any political subdivision of the said governments and gifts made in favor of educational or, and or charitable religious, cultural, social welfare institutions and provided that not more than 30% of the said donation is devoted by the donor institution for administration purposes. There's a bar question before asking whether the donation of a certain don, a very rich man, is subject to donor's tax or not. So apparently, there was a donation granted by a rich man, a don, to, an, to a non-government institution or non-government organization. And the amount given by the don was used as um was used was utilized as salaries for the personnel that was employed by the non-profit organization the question was there was no percentage presented it just stated there that it was used entirely 
to pay for the salaries of the employees of the non-government, non-profit organization. Well, you might be very, uh, you might be come aware that the question is gearing towards this provision in the law. If there was this presentation of the percentage, right? But then since there's no percentage, most of the examinees did not get the question, the answer right. So they did not state the percentage, but they stated that it was used for the salaries. So the salaries of the employees of that organization would mean that the amount was used for administrative purposes. Hence, it did not qualify as an exempt donation. So the entire amount that was given by the don was subjected to the, it should, should be subject to the donor's tax. There are various exemptions all, also under various laws. So we presented it here at the Republic Act 7549 for athletes, prizes, and awards that could also be subject, exempt from donor's tax and other special laws like the ERI um, amounts um, granted to these organizations may be exempt from donor's tax. You take note that the Integrated Bar of the Philippines is included in this list. And another one was recently issued because of this um, current COVID situation, which is um, which we call as the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act or Republic Act 11469. There are two different categories of donations that are given under this, um, are, that are given exemption under this law. So the first category is in the left side or the donations to government and accredited donor institutions. When you say accredited, they were able to um, register or get themselves accredited with the PCNC. And the donations to private entities and other institutions. So if you compare it with the um, current tax code, the donations to private entities and other institutions that are actually subject to donor's tax, but for the Bayanihan to Heal as one law, um, they, in, they included this as exempt, provided that the donations are limited to this um, COVID situation and it's given for the sole purpose of combating the COVID-19 during the state of national emergency. So the period when you, know, you will, um, when the donation is made is very important. And the nature and properties that are given during the COVID-19 state of national emergency is also important in determining whether it is exempt or not. So the donations that are exempt would include cash donations, critical or needed health care and supplies such as personal protective equipment or PPEs, medical equipment including the testing kits, relief goods and the use of personal and real estate properties. So there's an implementing rule and regulation under Republic uh, under Reg Revenue Regulations number 9-2020. So if there are certain notes that I also included here because there are differences in the documentary requirements. If the um, donation is given to the government, it must be properly documented, documented through a deed of donation. A mere deed of donation would suffice. But if it is a donation made to an accredited non-staff non-profit educational and or charitable, religious, cultural, social welfare corporations or institutions, including non-government organizations, it should be properly documented by a certificate of donation. And there's a very specific form that is um, prescribed by the tax authorities. Now we go to the donations to private entities and other institutions. These are actually exempt, okay? If it's given to private hospitals, and non-staff, non-profit, educational, and or charitable, religious, cultural, or social welfare institutions or corporations, and NGOs, even if it is not accredited. Again, I'm telling you, I'm saying here that this is a very special law. This is only applicable during the state of national emergency this year, right? 
So for private corporations, civic organizations, they, the donations to them may be exempt still, provided that these institutions and corporations directly transfer the donations or partner with accredited NGOs, the national government or any of its agencies or political subdivisions. They partner and transfer the donations to the ones that will really use this <coughs> goods that are included in the enumeration right because the donors that donations that are exempt here are limited to this um ppes medical equipments relief goods and the use of personal and real estate properties for the combat of this covid 19. for the donors tax exemption and full deductibility you know class so, uh, the meaning of full deductibility the donation may be considered as an expense that hence fully deductible for income tax purposes in the books of the donor. So in the current tax code, not all donations may be subject to 100% uh, deductibility. Some are subject to limited deductibility and others, even perhaps for others, these are sub not exempt at all, or th these are not allowable deductions at all, okay? So they need to comply with the requirements of full deductibility. So in this law, they provided for the dedu full deductibility as long as that documentation is submitted within 60 days from the lifting of the ECQ to the PIR revenue district offices where the donor and the donee recipients are registered. So if they're registered with different revenue regions, they need to submit this notifications of the donation for the different revenue districts, district offices, okay? So for the donor's tax rate, we know class that the donor's tax rate is now at 6%, but in the old tax code, it is graduated, okay, for relatives, but for strangers, it is fixed at 30%. So whether you are a stranger now, whether the donee is a stranger or a relative, the donor's tax rate would be 6%, which is based actually on the value of the donation in excess of 250,000 pesos. And this 250,000 pesos is a threshold computed for all donations that are done within the year. For let me discuss section 100, which is the transfers for less than an adequate and full consideration. So we also indicated here the um, case that is assigned to you, the Philippine American Life and General Insurance versus Secretary of Finance. Okay. So for under section 100, it states there that transfers for less than an adequate and full consideration will be subject to donor staffs. The presumption here is that if a certain person sold a property and the amount of the sales price is below the fair market value of the property. The difference between the fair market value and the selling price is considered as a donation. Okay, so some of this would argue that there's no donative intent actually. Therefore, it must not be subject to donor tax. But in the case presented and assigned to you, we the court discussed there that um, the absence of donative intent, if that be the case, does not exempt the sales of stock transaction from donor stocks because Section 100 of the NIRC actually categorically states that the amount by which the fair market value of the property exceeded the value of the consideration or the selling price shall be deemed a gift. So, Actually, what we see here is that this provision, Section 100, is an exemption to the general rule under the Civil Code regarding donations. So donor tax is imposed on donations. That's the general rule. The exception to this rule is that even if it is not a donation because there is no or there is an absence of donative intent, it is still considered as a donation under Section 100 of your tax code. Be very careful, though, because after the passage of RA 10963 or the train law, the, um, the lawmaker stated that if there is a bona fide sale transaction, okay, so it provides here that 
provided, however, that a sale, exchange, or other transfer of property made in the ordinary course of business a transaction which is a bona fide at arm's length and free from any donative intent will be considered as made for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. So it means that if the intention really is to transfer the property by sale, then even if the consideration is below the fair market value at the time of sale, the same is still not subject to donor's tax. Okay? So that's the uh, difference now with the trained law. But if you also, we also need to examine that there's a revenue regulation of the BIR clarifying this provision. In that revenue regulation, the BIR stated that there is still a need to to prove that this, there is really an intention to sell and there's no intention to donate. So there are three, um, for this exception to apply, there are three requisites, okay? There must be a bona fide transaction and that transaction is, as, is at arm's length and that it is free from any donative intent. Because if it is not free from any donative intent, again, section 100 would apply and that it means that it will be subject to donor's tax. The question now is whether this um, jurisprudence in Philippine American Life and General Insurance is still applicable after the passage of the train one. You need to read this case because it is a very unique one. It, it involves a sale of stock transaction by companies and the BAR determined that the fair market value of that shares that was sold were actually below the, um, the, the, no, the fair market value is really much higher than the consideration of the sales transaction. That's why it was subjected by the Bureau to the donor's tax. If it happened now after the uh, after the passage of train one, I think by the presence of the bona fide uh, transaction, uh, by the presence of that um, contract, a sale contract, and the showing that there is no intention to donate that property because these are owned by, by a company that is not um, related to the other um, buyer, then I think it would still be exempt from donor stocks. Now let's go to the various um, donations that are exempt, okay? Or exemption of certain gifts. We know that dowries and gifts made on account of marriages were exempt up to the amount of 10,000 in our old tax code. Now. It has been repealed. So any dowries may be subject to the donor's tax as long as it is more than the threshold. And before we end this session, um, let me discuss to you another um, concept about um, donation which is regarding the donations between spouses, okay? So we all know that under the new civil code, Article 87, that donations between spouses are actually, donations during the marriage are actually exempt from donor tax. So void donations, as void donations, these are not subject to donor tax. But the exemption to this one is that for donations mortis causa. So you know donations mortis causa means donations that will take effect after the death of the um, decedent and moderate gifts which the spouses may give each other on the occasion of any family um, rejoicing would be exempt from this donor's tax and are actually allowed as donations under the new civil code. So there are uh, donations of 
uh, between spouses where the property is a conjugal or a community property. Okay, so uh, for the husband and the wife, they're considered as separate and distinct taxpayers for purposes of this donor's tax. So if the property is owned solely by the, the wife or solely by the husband, they can actually they can actually donate it, okay? And be subject to donor tax. So you may find um, more regulations, more rules on this um, donor's taxation under RR 12-2008. Okay, so I think that's all for me. Um, see you next meeting for the discussion on value-added taxes. And let me remind you that we'll have a short quiz on our next meeting for um, that would cover estate and donors' taxes. Hope you um, learned something from me and um, see you on our next session. Goodbye.